Today we're going to talk about three things that the blue heron knows about your pond that you don't. The great blue heron. It's, it's the biggest bird in North America. This bird is a natural predator. They are such an amazing bird. First, before I tell you what they know about your pond that you don't realize, I want to tell you a couple things about them. They live to be about 15 years in the wild. They get um, about four and a half feet tall. That is a big bird. I mean, I'm sitting down, but that bird is somewhere up in this range. It's very tall. And uh, their wingspan is about six foot six. They weigh about seven pounds. And uh, I think their eggs are blue, if I remember correctly. And they have three to five eggs on average, but as many as seven at a time. Uh, they live in uh, what they call rookeries, which is like a community of great blue herons where they all hang out together and they roost up in trees at certain times of the year and they migrate south for the winter. So it's, it's a crazy bird. This bird, you may or may not know, they don't only eat fish. They don't only eat your koi and your goldfish that you have in your beautiful crystal clear pond. These guys are excellent at their job. Their job is to hunt ugly brown fish in dirty green water and they're very good at it. They won't only eat fish though. They'll eat lizards and they'll eat crayfish and frogs and, and small mammals even. I saw a video once on YouTube where this great blue heron was walking across really slow through this meadow and he just nailed a gopher and ate a gopher. I've seen him eat ducks before. I mean, it's, it's a crazy, crazy bird. But here's the things that they know about your pond that you might not know. And by me telling you this, it might help you to protect your beloved fish. There's three days a year, I'm sorry, three days a month where this bird can hunt your pond all night long. Now normally, they're hunting early in the morning before you wake up. They're hunting um, around five in the morning at dawn and they're, they're hunting your pond during the failing light right at dusk. They call it a crepuscular or crepuscular predator where they're hunting at those two times of the day. Now you'll see birds, you know, hunting throughout the day, but that's the primary time that they'll do it. But three days a month, they're hunting your pond all night long. And that is the night of the full moon and typically the day before and the day after that full moon. I've actually caught a great blue heron in my backyard after 10 p.m. at night stalking my fish, which was really rare. And of course, I ran out there, scared him off, and then I'm calling my neighbors that I know have ponds down the street. He's coming your way. So, uh, but I, I mean, I didn't read about that. I just, I just found out the hard way. He was out there hunting my fish. And uh, I will tell you, if you... If you have underwater lights on your pond, which gosh, I hope you do because underwater lights are really magnificent. But if you have underwater lighting on your pond, I would recommend that by the time you're checked out for the night, you should have your, your fish pond checked out for the night as well. Let me give you an example. Uh, a lot of people have the photo cells on their, on their transformers for their underwater lighting system. And it comes on when it gets dark and it goes off when it gets light. But that will enable the blue heron to hunt your pond at night as well. If it's two in the morning and you have this beautiful clear pond with these gorgeous fish and it's all lit up, the great blue heron could be hunting your pond a little bit later into the evening. So if you go to bed at 10, have the lights go off at 10 as well so you can protect your fish. Now, the next thing that he, that he may know about your pond that you probably don't know is he has a flight pattern. He lives up to 15 years old in the wild and he migrates. So in Southern California where I'm located, I see uh, the migratory pattern. I see more birds, more great blue herons hunting and stalking my clients and my ponds usually around September and October. So they're all flying down south. Uh, they're coming up north, it's getting all cold, so they don't want to be there. They're coming down where it's warmer. And so we see that flux of um, more birds around that time of the year. So what that tells me is, you know, they're flying down. They're flying, you know, through Utah and they're flying through Nevada. They're, they're coming down this way sometime in early September. By the time they get to me, it's September. So they're stocking those ponds along the way. When they stop to take a break, they have your pond on GPS. They have it on, they've already pin dropped your pond. If they've seen it, they know it. And they're going to come back to see you year after year after year. So um, you're on their calendar. So, um, I mean, so you should put them on your calendar as well so you can maybe do some added uh, protection to your pond during those times of year. Now, the last thing is going to blow your mind. I know a lot of people don't realize this, but what if I told you the great blue heron 
can train your fish to come to him so he can eat them. It's the real deal. It is the truth. And I'm going to tell you how he does it. The great blue heron will come up and when he lands next to the pond and he walks in like a statue, he stands there, he's an ominous figure and, and the fish are naturally, instinctively scared of him. So they'll go down to the bottom, they'll hide in the fish caves, they'll hide under the lilies, they'll do what they can to get away from him. But he'll just stand there like a statue for as long as it takes. He doesn't care. He's got all day long. He's got all night, three nights a year. You see what I'm saying? So he'll stay there and wait. Now once the fish calm down a little bit and they move around a little bit and they're hanging out and he can realize that they are comfortable, he will actually regurgitate into the pond. He'll throw up into the pond, have all this little barf floating around the top of the pond and the fish will come up to eat and then boom, he will get them. It is a real deal, it happens, and um, the, better, the better you know this bird, the more, more precautions you can take. Put a scarecrow on the pond, net the pond, put some wire above the pond, put a shade cell, have some canopy, get a dog, have a cat. There's a lot of things you can do to prevent the bird from hunting your pond, but I must warn you, you shouldn't use a shotgun. He's protected, this bird is a wonderful bird, he's protected uh, federally. That's a $20,000 fine if you should get caught messing with this bird. It is a wonderful bird, so, you know, it comes with the territory. I'm going to leave you with a question of the day. Number one, did that blow your mind? Did you know those things? Did you know that he barfs in the pond to get them to come and eat? Did you know that? And I want to know, tell me your heron stories. I know almost every single pond person on the planet has a story about a great blue heron and their pond, and I want to hear your story right here in the comments section below. All right? That's it for the day. I'm Eric Triplett, the Pond Digger. I hope you dig ponds as much as I do.